Good afternoon, my name is uh, Harald Wüst. I'm from the uh, Fraunhofer IGD located in Darmstadt and uh, for the last 12 years I've been doing uh, research or applied research there uh, regarding virtual and augmented reality uh, and uh, within these years we've been implementing a uh, vision engine uh, which is mostly used for uh, visual tracking for augmented reality applications. Um, yeah, and we use like uh, augmented reality applications for, for any kind of purpose, like for example, marketing, uh, sales, cultural heritage, but like our main focus always has been like uh, industrial applications. So this is why our focus regarding the tracking solution is also very uh, focused on, on these industrial use cases. Uh, at the Fraunhofer Institute, which is like an applied research institute. We did like lots of, lots of proof of concept uh, projects and pilot uh, projects and studies, but never real uh, products. So that's why we are currently in the process of uh, creating like, like a spin-off of uh, the Fraunhofer department, where we want to uh, productize uh, the technology in like our VisionLib SDK and make it available, available for everybody to use. So, um, like uh, 10 years ago, when I was uh, doing my, my PhD thesis at the uh, Fraunhofer IGD, there I was, uh, this is not working, I'm mean, just make it this way. There was, uh, there I was doing these uh, model-based, uh, like these uh, tracking solutions, which are based on features. Like at that time, everybody was uh, doing marker tracking and then people said, hey, let's do something cool and just not use markers, but just do natural feature tracking. And these were the results like uh, that days where we used like uh, natural image features, reconstructed those and did like a slam like, slam -like implementation. Um, we had like a, a render engine, like a browser plugin, which could handle like features like uh, occlusion handling. So, um, then, like our our project partners, oh, these videos don't work. Oh, the PD. So, um, like our project partners, they did like um, a marketing video uh, which was looking like this. Like this is also on YouTube. Probably many of you guys know this video. So. They were uh, promoting this uh, kind of idea of an, a technician uh, which uses like some fancy uh, augmented reality classes and could just see like with these classes the step-by-step -step instructions like what to do. Of course, this is like uh, all a bit fake, but like this, this idea has been like around uh, for, for many years. And like uh, BMW these days was also thinking at 2010, uh, this technology will be like uh, distributed in like in, in every repair station around the world. Um, but like now we have uh, 2017 and uh, such uh, maintenance scenarios are still not rolled out like in a very wide manner and like people still do like proof of concept projects and, and pilot projects in these industrial uh, use cases. <clears throat> so, um, I'll just try again. So what is the problem? So, of course, there were not just these devices available. The devices uh, were just like too cumbersome for the daily use. Like there were glasses which were just so heavy and you couldn't see any sharp image. And like everybody of us was running around with a, a Nokia phone. So of course the devices were just not usable these days. One problem was like content because it was just too much effort to create these content uh, manually and to create like applications, animations, to enable like these uh, augmented reality scenarios. Rendering, huge amount of data, of course, is a problem. Uh, tracking uh, was one of the biggest problems because it was easy to create some short demonstrating applications, but especially in augmented, uh, in industrial scenarios, there were many uh, reflecting materials, lighting changes, and bad lighting conditions in general. So it was always very hard to create like uh, stable tracking and like the authoring to create like applications which are really easy to author, which makes, which makes it possible to save money and to make like life easier for the whole manufacturing process, for example. 
Like many people worked on devices, content, also the rendering. Our contribution uh, for this uh, problem is like um, the tracking uh, algorithms. And like what uh, we did, uh, Yeah, it works this way, great. Uh, what we did was uh, applying any kind of uh, tracking algorithms. For example, here we just used like a feature-based uh, tracking to track like the exterior of a car. We created like a point cloud, used this point cloud uh, and aligned it with a with real model. And then it was possible to create like a indoor navigation system to find some, some certain points. Uh, on the other side, we have like a um, a model-based tracking system, basically the same problem, find some certain points on the 3D model, but there we just used like the cat data uh, uh, of, the, of the car here and used this to, to track like the camera position. So uh, the difference is that these model-based uh, tracking approaches are so much easier to deploy because we don't need these uh, pre-processing step where we have to reconstruct the map first and align these map to some certain a given scenario, but all we need is to take the model and uh, track the model. So uh, this is like the main idea of like our our VisionLib SDK. Uh, we what we need as an input is like the cat data and the real object, like a camera stream of some some camera. In our SDK, like the camera position uh, is estimated, and with this camera position, we can. Uh, uh, push these information to the rendering system and do any kind of rendering on uh, many different devices. Like currently, we support uh, iOS and Android tablets, uh, also Windows platform, and uh, we just released like the HoloLens version. Uh, but yeah, we also support like any other kinds of systems, uh, which could be thinkable of. We don't have like everything in the SDK, but if you have any Linux platform, we can also use like uh, or create like um, a port on, on these platforms. So um, why is it useful to, to use like these model-based trackings? So the biggest advantage is that the, the setup process is uh, fairly easy. There's no uh, pre-processing amount uh, to do, like no preparation step. All you need is to have the model. And of course, the models are also not for free, but uh, the, there's much more potential to put this in an automated process to generate like all these reference data. So another thing is the tracking configuration that can be created without having seen the real model at all. So if there are some, some machines or some parts, you can create like augmented reality content and tracking configuration, and you don't need to have the real object at all because you can only rely on, on content in this uh, coordinate system of the cat data. Changes in constructions, they don't cause high adaption costs because if the model is changed, you can just uh, get the new model. And uh, one advantage is that uh, it, this approach we, we drive only depends on geometry and not on any material properties, which makes it possible that we can just use the same uh, tracking methods for, for any kind of car. Like here we have a blue, if it's blue or yellow or black, it, it all works like the so, same way. Uh, another key advantage is that it's very uh, robust against different lighting conditions and lighting changes because these model-based tracking uh, technologies only rely on on image gradients, which are much more uh, less, uh, uh, much more robust against uh, lighting changes. And of course, one key advantage is it's a very scalable method to take the data into the tracking configuration. Like if you have 100 different cars, uh, you don't need to do 100 times uh, some certain process. You can just process all these uh, uh, geometry uh, preparation automatically. So here this was like a demo we showed like uh, this year in, in Santa Clara, which is like a Unity plugin with our tracking uh, SDK. Uh, this, the video is kind of jittery, sorry about that. Uh, so um, yeah, here we just had like a whole car and we're just like using the whole car as a, as a tracker, tracking reference and did some uh, certain points of interest where the user could click and, and run around. So another uh, application was here for 
uh, like a, sh a short, quick instruction manual for like here, a machine where people could just visual, visually see how to use uh, this machine. And of course, the, the, one of the most important or the most relevant um, applications is like industrial maintenance and repair. And here we also have like a, an application where we did not use Unity, but like a web-based application layer. Uh, to, to provide like 3D information and 3D content. So features of the, the Vision Lab SDK is a monocular model-based tracking system which is based on, on polygonal 3D data. We have a legacy support for old Metaio-based uh, line models which can also be used in like our SDK. We also have a reference image-based uh, tracker which can be used. Uh, we have a SLAM integration which we use on top of our reference image or model tracking, but lately uh, when ARKit came out, we also implemented uh, the ARKit or like the HoloLens internal tracking on top of the, the model-based tracking. Camera calibration with a multi-view camera support, and we support the iOS, macOS, Android, Windows, and since a couple of weeks also the HoloLens platform. Many people use Unity, but we also have unit uh, interfaces to Native-C or Objective-C and uh, possible is also like uh, JavaScript or any other kind of interface. Now I would like to uh, just show you a very quick demo how to use uh, the SDK. So um, you can just uh, go to the website and download the, um, um, uh, the package of the SDK. So now we just create like a new project and uh, here I have some test data, which is like here a, a polygonal uh, object and uh, a license file. The license is also provided in, on, our, on our platform. So first step is to, to import like the whole package. Like in this package, there are some scripts uh, and also the, the plugin, which uh, handles like the main uh, tracking tasks. Um, then we have the, like the polygonal model. We uh, drop this into the models and, okay, this takes a while to, to import. And um, then next step is uh, to put the license into the, the streaming assets folder. And then we have like the model itself and the Tracking configuration. The tracking configuration, um, yeah, looks like this, uh, which only uh, holds like the, the string of the 3D model, which is to, uh, which is going to be tracked in some parameters. And like these parameters, they are all described in uh, uh, the tutorials. Like here, this is like the documentation, and for example, here all the configuration parameters, like how to use the, the different configuration of the um, of the parameters of the tracking uh, configuration. So now what we need to do is just delete the main camera and we have some uh, prefabs. We use like the vision lip camera, which is uh, mainly the link to the tracking system. Uh, and then we, uh, the last thing is to create like a start script Oops. So, um, sorry. Um, one more try. Okay, here we go. So now we have the, the configuration file which was written like this, so that we see something. We can just take the, the model itself, put it into the scene. We have to rotate it about 180 degrees because like, there are different uh, coordinate systems of, of Unity and like, uh, the tracking engine. So what we, not, what, it, what we need to do next is just like, uh, get like an initial uh, position Therefore, we can use like the init camera and assign the view to this camera. So, and I guess this 
should be possible now to track like the model. So here I have the, the real car of the model, and here you see like the, the gray 3D model is just like the virtual uh, model of the car, and now we can just take the initial alignment and uh, continue just uh, tracking the 3D model like with the uh, tracking engine. So um, we try to make the, the whole process as easy as possible, but of course there might be still improvements. And like one big advantage of here again, like if you put like the car in a completely different lighting conditions, it, it always works at different uh, environments. So this is what makes these uh, tracking methods uh, very applicable, and you don't have to worry about lighting conditions at trade shows. And so, yeah, this is like one of the key benefits of using like model-based tracking methods. Okay, I think that's it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Like, if you're interested, you can go to our website, download the SDK, and yeah, try it out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Harold. <laughs> <laughs>